Oklahoma teachers are flocking to Arkansas for better pay and job security. It's a problem we first told you about last November. Tonight, Channel 8's Maureen Wartz returns to Westville in Adair County and finds the situation is only getting worse. The school district's warning to lawmakers is tonight. Channel 8 close up. When we first visited Westville Public Schools in Oklahoma six months ago, everybody see well? Okay. We thought things were bad. If we have, you know, cuts in the maintenance department, then who has to pick up the slack? You know, somebody does. So it's June when you'll have an idea? Yes, we hope. Will... Okay. The first Monday is Ju of June is when we have to let our teachers know if we hire them back or not. They've gotten worse. They can go across the state line and make eight to $12,000 right now and not depend on, is it going to be there? Is the money going to be there? Are they going to be able to fund it? Westville Superintendent Terry Houston says the lawmakers in Oklahoma City trying to figure out how to fund education don't have a clue. The cuts aren't just bleeding his teachers dry and robbing them of any optimism, but now they're tasked with a new job no one signed up for. Grabbing a mop or a broom to help clean. It is failing. We are failing miserably. If I had, if I had failed as bad in my job, I would not be here still, eight years as superintendent. Because things have gotten so tight, classrooms aren't cleaned every day. For a while there, Hustis was driving a bus route, and he also avoided filling much needed teaching positions. How long have you been in this classroom here? Five years. So five years. Yep. All of that affects teachers like Jim Wade. Because the kids deserve it, everybody knows it, and why nobody's doing anything about it is beyond me. Of course, I'm not a politician. I just stay in that little cubicle and teach math. <laughs> Give me two X. Wade's an algebra two and trig teacher at the high school. Plus two. His class sizes are relatively small, but that could change if there are more cuts. You just got to feel those needs for those kids that come from broken homes and those kind of things. And uh, just being able to, to do those extra things, we can't, you know, and make sure we don't have 30 kids in a classroom. There are 27 desks in this science classroom, and they need to hire a new science teacher for next year. But if that position is cut, or if they can't find a teacher, that means more students and more desks will be crammed into this already crowded classroom. It's tough. The, the school business is really tough right now. Houston says the school has reached a point where it can't handle any more cuts. Right now, he doesn't know if some of his newer teachers will even have a job next year. Because what we're doing is insane. We're doing the same thing over and over again. That's the definition of insanity. I want to collect my variables, so I'm gonna, I like to keep my variable positive. And unlike the Algebra 2 equations he can solve, Everybody good? Wade says he doesn't know the answer to the problem, but... I've heard it said, oh, well, we can't fix education by just throwing money at it. But we've never tried that. <laughs> Wade was recently named Teacher of the Year here. He says Westville, in his small classroom... Let's just answer some questions our home no matter what. So I'm going to multiply every single one of these terms by the common denominator. Maureen Wirtz, Tulsa's Channel 8. Superintendent's expecting more cuts in May and June, and he says it won't be until June when he'll have an idea.